a completely somewhat unrelated but entirely related note shout out to mmos.com that is the place where i found this game and that's is the place where you know this general video came to light because i was looking for a game to cover it and this was the first place i came i've been following remote for quite a while now and i usually watch his first looks over anyone else's and it was it's it's just nice to finally be able to say hey thank you so if he ever does watch this video thank you i appreciate it i'm glad that you're you know off doing your own thing and he also follows me on twitter so that's that's pretty great what's going on guys pride here bringing you my very first gamer news video and i'm not gonna waste any time let's just go right into it so the game I chose was Line of Sight, a game made by Black Spot Entertainment and was released on January 31st, 2017. So this game is basically a free to play Call of Duty and I definitely respect that because there are kids out there who can't play Call of Duty because they can't buy it and or their birthday hasn't come up yet and or they don't have a job and you know things like that. So this is definitely a great alternative if you can't buy Call of Duty, or if you're just tired of playing Call of Duty, or if you don't have a console, or you're tired of playing your PS3. That last one was mostly just me. Anyway, they have certain abilities called, I think they're P-Psionics. I think that's what they're called, P-Psionic? I, I don't care, man. Anyway, you get to use these abilities, but they come with a price of your health bar. So each time you use the ability, your health bar will decrease just by a little bit or a lot, depending on which power it is. I don't know. I haven't fully gone on and, you know, figured out how much health is lost from each one. Each game is generally fast paced. Kind of like the Call of Duty field. The matchmaking is also pretty easy. Um, you pretty much just jump right into the game, you hit the matchmaking button, and you get to choose which game modes you want to play, and it just cues you for all of them. And the very first available game mode is the one you go into, and that's that. There's also a box that allows you to go into a game that's already started, or wait for a match that has not started yet. Let's go right into the specs so that anyone who wants to play this game won't be heartbroken when they go to the official site and realize that they can't play. The specs for this game are, and I'm going to read them off as follows, minimum OS system is a Windows 7, processor is a 2 point, it's just a 2.0 gigahertz from an Intel or an AMD, memory is 2 gigs of RAM, graphics, huh, NVIDIA GeForce 8600 or 9600 GT, ATI slash AMD Radeon HD 2600 3600. DirectX version is a 9 and the storage is 2 gigabytes. Now, the recommended Windows 7 64 bit dual core 2.6 from Intel to AMD 2.6, 4 gigs of RAM, NVIDIA 460 GTX or an ATI HD 6850. Um, DirectX is the same and storage is also the same. So it sounds like anyone can generally run this game. So if you do want to try it, go ahead and download it, give it a shot, and hopefully, you know, you'll enjoy it. Alright, so let's talk a little bit about mechanics. Now, I'm just going to go completely off the dome. I'm not going to go ahead and log on to the game so I can figure out all the controls offhand and stuff like that. I'm just going to tell you guys a little bit from what I remember from playing for like the last three to four days. But it's kind of simple, really. It's kind of like basically every other FPS games except for the mouse wheel is utilized for using your powers that is like I think if you generally just like flick the mouse wheel up or down it does your blink power and I'm pretty sure I believe it's like the F button or something that does the attacking power that you can choose from but yeah those are how you use your powers when aiming it has the toggle feature so you can either click um, you can either right click once and aim and then right click again and you know toggle your aim off or you can hold the button and switch from on to off and crouching is also toggleable which i really do enjoy so instead of you know holding your pinky down on the goddamn control button for like half an hour you can just press it once and there you go so controls pretty simple pretty easy to you know get down also you can switch your weapons with one through four one thing i will say is from what i remember there isn't like a quick melee button so you can't just go from like 
You can't just like have your AR out and then someone get close and you're trying to reload. So you just say fuck and you panic knife. I don't think that's a thing. I haven't found that button quite yet. Maybe it does exist. Maybe it doesn't. But I will definitely let you guys know if I find out if there's a quick melee button. But from what I looked last night, I couldn't find one. So for now, that's pretty much that on the controls basically how that shop works is if you've ever played like a free fps game you know how generally all the shops work right but for anyone who hasn't really done it before the shops are basically where you buy new weapons but the catch about this is most of the time you rent weapons depending on how much you're willing to drop on it like i know right now i want like an ak-74 and that's like 144k and I only have like 80,000 on me right now. But if I wanted to rent that AK-74, it would be like 9,000 for three days, like 12,000 for a week or so. And that's pretty much how it works. I know it's a pretty lame system, but I guess, I don't really have a good explanation for that. But I will say I'm at least glad they allow you to purchase permanent weapons with in-game currency. So if anything, it's just putting in the time and the effort and you know the general grind to get the weapon that you want or you can just buy it like most people but yeah the shops are pretty good there's also like a random box and this box contains multiple weapons and you also get a chance at a permanent weapon depending on you know which weapon it will not depending on which weapon it is it depends on how lucky you are you have to be really lucky to get that weapon because it's like I can't make a guesstimate right now, but let's say let's say there's like 12 items, and one of those 12 items are the permanent weapon, and you know it's gonna have like the lowest percentage chance rate because you know it's a permanent weapon. But if you do like spending gems on it to you know try to get yourself a permanent weapon, then by all means I'd go for it. But based on my personal experience, I wouldn't actually do it. Well, not my personal experience, but my personal opinion. I don't think it's an actual thing that you should do because it'll be. I kind of feel like depending on your luck, it would be a lot cheaper to just buy the weapon with the um, currency they make you use, which is gems. Those are the, I'm pretty sure those are like the. Not, it's not like the cash currency, but it's a currency that's harder to get than the actual game money. So buying a weapon with like a thousand gems would probably be a lot more of a time and yeah it would be a lot more of a time saver than just you know rolling on the box over and over and over again because like I said depending on your percentage you either spend less or more on a permanent weapon that you're trying to get if you just go ahead and buy it from the shop so if you feel lucky go ahead and go for it if not then that's cool too just you know buy the weapon permanently with either gems or the end game currency well they're both in oh my god either gems or the game token so i guess it's time to get my personal opinion but i've been probably accidentally doing that the entire episode but i do think it's generally a fun game like i said i respect the hustle of making a free call of duty meets bioshock type of game and it's like pretty much every other game it's always a lot better when you have friends Someone shot me, missed every shot. I turned around, shot him in the head, kept going, then Zatchel head shot me. You dick, I was telling a story. I didn't know who was on it. You didn't ask. Why would I? Because I'm telling a story. You think what these puns say, hey, is that you? <laughs> I would have. If you were telling a story, I would have been interested. Is that poison gas? Yeah, I'd stay away from that. Grenade! had a lot of fun times <laughs> and that one short day that me and Blaze played the game together I probably laughed like eight out of the goddamn nine recordings that I made for this particular video but like I said it's fun to play with friends um it's nice and fast paced it's free so you know you, you're not really losing anything from it you get to buy weapons permanently like I already said before I know I'm like reiterating that point but I'm pretty sure 
that there used to be a time in life where I played combat arms and I could not buy a weapon permanently with the in-game currency. There's no exosuits or any bullshit like that. It's kind of just, I mean, there is like the superpowers. Well, not the superpowers. Can we even call them that? I don't even think they're really, well, it depends. But there's no like boosting. People aren't all through the air and stuff like that. The worst you're going to have to worry about is someone teleporting a short distance. And depending on that particular gunfight or who's better at shooting, who's better at aiming, they may have either, it's a 50-50 chance they either, they either won themselves a gunfight or they fucked themselves because, like I said, you lose health from using those powers. So, yeah, it's not like that Infinite Warfare type shit. It's kind of just, it's a chill game with some powers every once in a while. And to be honest, people don't really use them that frequently because, like I said before, you lose health from using those powers. So the only time you would really see someone using those powers is if they either thought they couldn't get away otherwise or they were trying to avoid a huge gunfight or, you know, some that would end up trying to turn the tide in their favor, not just using it just to use it. Well, anyway, I think that was it for my first news video. I feel like it was kind of rough <laughs> only because I've never really done it before and, you know, I don't really know the proper way of doing it. I'm not really sure if there is a proper way for me to do it. I guess my job is just kind of to introduce the game and let you guys know that this is an option for you to play should you actually want to play it. But I'm not really all that worried. It's the very first news video. I'm pretty sure I'll get better. It just takes a few episodes to get a set structure and also build that confidence to mean what I'm saying when I'm you know, talking about these games and giving you guys this information. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please drop a like. It's definitely something new. I've never really done it before. And honestly, I already have like two or three more videos planned out. So hopefully you guys actually will enjoy me doing these news videos. It'll get better, I promise. And I'll see you guys next video.